Hey folks, I've seen some content on calculating center of pressure in a few special cases, but wanted to fill you in on the general case. I'll walk you through an example in this video. I provided a spreadsheet in the description to show how to calculate the center of pressure in the general 3D case. To understand how this spreadsheet's working, let's take a very simple case. We run our flow simulation, it calculates the pressures acting on all these surfaces, and integrates them to come up with a force. But let's say our flow simulation study has all the pressure acting right in this location here. The results of the flow study are going to show a net force acting on this body, also a torque acting around a coordinate system that we specify. The torque that it might calculate in a case like this could be something like 10 newton meters, let's say. And the force, perhaps 20 newtons. Now since we know that force times a distance, we'll call it u, is equal to torque, we can solve this equation for u, and we end up with torque divided by force. And in this case, that's 10 divided by 20. We end up with 0 0.5 meters. Now, of course, the direction is important, and we know that the force is acting in the negative direction, so this will be negative 0 0.5 meters. Now, this means that our line of action for our force is along this x equals negative 0.5 meter line. You place this force anywhere on this line, and we would get this result. In addition to this, we decide on a chord plane. Usually, we'll have it go through the origin. And with this, we can identify a useful uh, center of pressure location. Now, I've shown you a nice simple case where my forces line up with the x and y directions nice and neatly. But in more complex 3D cases, these force arrows can go in all sorts of directions. That's where the spreadsheet comes in handy. For the vector case, you'll need to recall cross products. If we take F cross U, we can get to the torque. But in this case, we know what F is, we know what the torque is, and we're trying to solve for U. And that's what the spreadsheet does. You'll input your force vector, your torque vector, and also the normal for your chord plane. And from this, we'll determine two points for the line of action of your force. And the second point on this line of action will be located on the chord plane. Let's find the center of pressure on this example body. I've set up the velocity to flow in the positive x direction. And I've created goals to monitor the forces acting in the x, y, z, and also the torques acting around the coordinate system that you see located here. Let's run this study and see what kind of result we get. You see our force acts mostly in the x, but a little bit in the negative y. And most of the torque happens around the z. If I create a goal plot, I can export these values to Excel and then copy them into my spreadsheet. Finally, for my chord plane vector, I'll use the y direction. So that'll be a, that'll be a plane like this, this plane here and I get a center of pressure location here. If I want to see the line of action, I'll plot these two points in SOLIDWORKS and see what it looks like. You can use a 3D sketch to do this. Place two points, and then set their coordinates. If I connect these two points with a line, this shows the line of action for the force. And based on the chord plane, I can see the center of pressure going to be this point here. I can check this by placing a coordinate system at some of these points. Place one here. I'll also test another point over here. And maybe just an arbitrary point in space. We can see what our moments around these different points sum to. I'll start with this arbitrary coordinate system. And I can see a net torque, about 20 in this case. But if I sum the moments around any coordinate system that's on this line of action, I can see my torque is pretty close to zero. And here too, also close to zero. A few additional points worth mentioning. Sometimes determining the location of the center of pressure is unnecessary. If I locate my origin strategically about the center of mass, and then just look at the moments, we can decide which way this body might rotate. If your objective 
is to determine how stable your model is. Also, if your model is two-dimensional or contains a lot of symmetry, you may be able to shortcut this spreadsheet and do some simpler hand calcs. If you like this content and would like to see more like this, please like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.